Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Giles and this is Home Theater Fanatics. Today, we're gonna build another subwoofer. And this time, it's another huge one. Remember the Devastator build, the 21 inch build I did before? Well, we're gonna use another 21 inch driver, this time from Lavoce, and install it inside of a Marty Cube enclosure from GSG Audio. This thing is super cool. It's the new rounded over version and it looks amazing. It's like a third of the size of the Devastator, but it gives a huge amount of volume. I mean, this thing is a beast. So I'm really looking forward to stepping through this build with you so you can see exactly how this thing is done beginning to end. Now, before we get into it, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I drop another build video. And with that, let's go ahead and get started and see exactly how to put this thing together. To get started, you're going to want to lay out your pieces so you kind of understand what all is involved in the process. I recommend laying them out approximately in numerical order and then identifying the pieces that don't have any numbers and checking which pieces of the build they're used in. This first piece of the build is really the trickiest part. You've got to get these three pieces of wood glued together and there's really nothing for them to hold on to while you're doing it. So as you'll see, I use a fourth piece of the box um, that fits in at the farther end as a brace so that I can clamp all this stuff up. But I don't glue that one in, right? So just uh, be careful not to glue it in. And then also make sure that that piece at the kind of the top of the U there that you see is set correctly. There are two ways that it'll fit in and I'll look closely at the instructions to make sure you've got it right. This is where you have a decision to make. Are you going to use regular speaker wire connectors or are you going to use speak on um, power cables, the, the pro style? If you're gonna use speak on the, the pro stuff, you need to glue this little round circular piece in. If not, you don't need to worry about it. In these next two sections, you're going to install internal bracing and it's very important that you get this bracing pushed down all the way. If you don't, it'll stick up a little too far and it'll make it really difficult to put the front baffle on. Um, so when you put these in, make sure you get them seated as far down as you can. Now let's talk about glue. I like to use tight bond glue and tight bond comes in three different flavors, so to speak, tight bond one, two, and three. And uh, as you move from one to two to three, the glue will take longer to set, but it also becomes a little bit runnier. However, the strength of the glue gets stronger as you move from one to three. Um, I've built most everything using Tight Bond 3 in the past. However, with this build, I decided to go with Tight Bond 2, and I really liked that it doesn't run nearly as much as Tight Bond 3 does. Uh, so it's kind of a good compromise between having a glue that doesn't set too quickly, but also a glue that uh, it doesn't run so bad so that you have to do tons and tons and tons of cleanup. With Type Bond 3, I always find myself with tons of glue to, to wipe off uh, and, you know, use a lot of paper towels and it's just kind of messy and it's, it's kind of a difficult uh, glue to deal with. Um, now, another thing that you need to consider when you're using Type Bond 2 as opposed to Type Bond 3 is when you clamp down I found that it took a lot longer for all of the glue to squeeze out uh, using Tight Bond 2. Maybe that's just a factor of uh, how thick it is as opposed to the Tight Bond 3, which is much more watery. But uh, I would find myself clamping, waiting 30 seconds, and some glue would come out, and I'd wipe that. And I would clamp, clamp a little bit tighter, and then more glue would come out, and I would sit without clamping harder, and even more glue would come out. So uh, just some things to think about, but I really did enjoy using the Tight Bond 2. This front baffle is really the coolest part of the build for me. I really like the way it works uh, and, and fits together. Um, you do have to get these little wooden dowels uh, that you see. If you check out the webpage, it'll give you the specifics. And I'll also uh, have some links down below to uh, the ones that I use that worked well. Um, but uh, this thing's triple layer goodness and it fits together so perfectly. So I just, uh, I really enjoyed putting this piece together. 
As you prepare for this build, you really need to think about the tools that you're going to need to really make this an easy experience for you. And the tool that you're going to use the most throughout the build will be your clamps. Um, now, some people will want to use like a brad nailer along with clamps. I just use clamps only and it works out fine, whichever way works. But if you're looking at using only clamps, you're going to need at least eight clamps for this. And uh, you'll need four of the three foot clamps and four of the that can be shorter, like uh, two foot clamps. But I would recommend four of the two foot clamps and maybe six or maybe even eight of the three foot clamps. Um, sometimes you just want to really clamp down a piece from a lot of different directions. And if you don't have all of the clamps available, uh, you know, it just makes it much more difficult to get the job done as compared to having the clamps that you actually need uh, to make the job easy. So when you get ready for the build, think about your clamps. And if you don't have that number of clamps, I would recommend that you go out and get those. Another tool that you'll use throughout the whole build is a, a brush. And you know, it's not obvious to me that, that you would need a brush for this, but I found that the special uh, rubber or silicon or whatever it's made out of brush that's made for spreading glue really, really makes it easy to get the glue where you want it. And you end up wasting less glue and you're not using your finger to, to push it around all the time and get this crap all into your fingernails and, and whatnot. So that's another tool that I would look strongly into uh, getting before you start this build. One piece of equipment that really made this build easy for me, at least for the first half, was a table. Um, being able to assemble these first few pieces kind of up higher where, where it's easier for you to get at the, the pieces was really, really beneficial to me. Now, as you go through the build, uh, this thing is going to get heavy and it gets so heavy that you have to put it on the floor uh, or you have to have multiple people or a lot really big tables to, to kind of deal with it. Um, because because it's not tiny and uh, you know this might be the smallest form factor that GSG sells uh, but it is it's really a big form factor so take a look at getting a table and see uh, if that's something that you can get your hands on and even if it's just uh, some saw horses and some two by fours or something to, to help place this up uh, I found that having that platform really simplified uh, the build process now as we look at paint uh, the rattle can paint is, you know, just some stuff that I bought from Home Depot. You don't need anything special for this. The goal in this step really is just to get black paint deep inside of the port so that when people look inside of the port, it'll be dark inside. And once everything's assembled, it's difficult to get that paint far inside. So you do want to do that painting before you get finished assembling all the pieces. This step is one that people find a little bit tricky. I've heard this quite a bit from folks. So when you lay that top front panel, so this isn't the front baffle, this is the piece that the baffle will attach to. People find it actually lifts up in spots and that's because the internal braces didn't get pushed down far enough all the way. So please, as you put this together, if it's not smooth and flush around all of the edges, go ahead and pull that back up and uh, then use a chisel or a sander or something to take those internal pieces down just that half a millimeter or whatever it takes to get that piece to sit flat. Because when you put that front baffle on, if it's not flat and smooth, it'll be much more difficult to finish the unit down the line. One thing you need to do that I didn't have to because things worked out pretty well, but uh, as you're getting ready to put this front baffle on, you need to dry test it, right? So dry fit, and if it lifts up anywhere, this is where you uh, take that orbital sander and just knock down anything that's uh, preventing that baffle from sitting absolutely flat. You want this thing to be as flush as it is, right? You just, you, you, you can't, you can't have any bumps or have this thing lift up anywhere. So this is very important. Use the sander copiously if you need to, to get this part right. These little feet are my least favorite part of the whole build, right? Um, so it doesn't give you a flat bottom and then you've got these little gaps that I ended up having to put a lot of filler in to, to make things smooth. 
I would much rather have had just a solid piece that you put across the bottom and then you can fill the cracks in or whatever um, to make it smooth so that when you lay this thing on the side, um, and I have to lay mine on the side the way my screen works, so, it, so it'll look better. So it kind of looks a little jacked up with uh, these we weird feet on the bottom. Now, having this is, is nice because you can mount little rubber feet or something to this thicker part, but for me, I would rather just have a full, smooth, flat plate there. Finishing the box really is personal preference, but for me, I take the path of least resistance and use spray-on Duratex. Um, and I even use the cheapest possible tool that you can, which is a hopper gun that I got from uh, Harbor Freight. It was like 20 or 30 bucks. And I use that with an old compressor that I have. Um, it makes applying the, the Duratex really, really easy. Um, just make sure to use everything at the lowest possible setting. So about 20 PSI, uh, set the material uh, dial uh, to as little material as possible. You'll still end up spraying up a, a ton of material out of this thing, but it goes on fairly smoothly and it gives you a fairly good uh, finished product if this is the kind of look that you're going for. You don't need to primer anything, just fill the hopper gun up and go to town. Make sure you practice on a piece of scrap before you get started. Building the internal cable is actually pretty fun and it's not that difficult, although you do need a bunch of tools if you wanna do it the way that I've done. So first off, I'll be attaching this to the speak on adapter, which you see there and it uses 0.187 quick disconnects. Um, the quarter inch are too big, so make sure you get the, the smaller ones and you'll likely have to mail order them. Um, I use I, anywhere from 14 to 10 gauge wire, um, typically 12 gauge, and I use in-wall rated stuff. And uh, I simply just strip some of it down, attach a quick disconnect, and then use uh, heat shrink to kind of clean things up. And I'll use heat shrink um, where the uh, the sheath of the wire stops and then heat shrink also to cover up where the wire terminates into the quick disconnect. Um, you know, this is maybe a little overkill, but you know, it makes me feel comfortable and, and nice and secure knowing that that cable is not going to fall apart with all of the, the base vibration that you have going on inside of the speaker. And uh, there's quite a bit of vibration in there, uh, if you know what I mean. But yeah, the process is easy. Just uh, add those quick disconnects and you'll connect them to the plus one and minus one of that speak on. Uh, obviously, if you're going to use uh, traditional speaker connectors, you know, uh, like banana plugs or something, that will be different. But I really like how secure the connection with a speak on adapter is. You know that thing's not going to come out no matter what. Um, and I think it also gives it kind of a cool pro look on your subwoofer that not everybody else has. Uh, so it's kind of a differentiator. Installing the speak on plug is really pretty easy. Basically, you just need to pre-drill four holes that match what, whatever screws that you're gonna use. And uh, I've used these cap head screws that I got from Parts Express that are pretty nice. And uh, just pre-drill, then just drop those screws in and bolt them in. Now we are down to the final stretch, actually installing the speaker. And uh, this is actually pretty straightforward. If you've made it this far, you're, you're pretty much done. Uh, what you'll want to do is take the positive and negative and attach to your speaker in whichever way that uh, it needs to do that. For me, it was just the little spring compressible uh, leads and you just uh, take the bare wire and plug it straight in. Uh, from there, typically on a speaker this size, you'll need eight screws and uh, make sure whatever screws that you're using are actually large enough. The head is large enough to catch on the speaker. Uh, the ones that I was using weren't quite large enough, so I added some washers in to get a nice strong contact to hold the speaker in. Now, always be careful as uh, as you put this in, pre-drill your hole deep enough so that you don't snap the heads off of your uh, your screws, which is a nightmare if that happens. Uh, but go ahead, pre-drill, uh, clean things up with a, a vacuum or, or some cloth or whatnot. And then you can use a, a, a driver to drive these things in most of the way, but then I always come back and finish up uh, with a, a hex wrench. I used to not do this, and uh, once I snapped off a few heads of screws, then I came back and said, nope, no more. Now let's take a quick peek at the Lavoche driver installed inside of the Marty Cube. It's a pretty good looking setup. I really like it. And that my friends is how you build the 21 inch GSG Audio Roundover Marty Cube kit featuring the Lavoche driver. 
Now, this is only how you build the sub, not how it sounds. So keep your eyes peeled because I'll be dropping new videos that show REW measurements, comparison to other subwoofers, and that's information that you're gonna to wanna to know so that you can decide if this is something that you're interested in building for yourself. Now, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll be notified when these next videos come out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.